Good morning. Morning here today. And getting a earlier start on things because it's officially the weekend. And I've still got my stroop waffle on top of my coffee. It's all nice and melty because it's been on here for a minute. Yeah, there we go. See, it's like yeah, soft. Oh my god, that's wonderful. This one's caramel. They have a bunch of different flavors, but this one's the easiest to find. It's usually in the international food section. It's from Europe. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with these in Europe. And they're just so compact and yummy. Perfect little breakfast treat. So, you can also dip them in your coffee, which I might do here. Because otherwise, I don't really have another place to put this down except on top of my coffee, and now it's too small. So, don't mind me. But then I will get started painting page two. This is the inside of this coffee shop I painted yesterday. And I just loved um, this art they hung on the walls and like the perspective that gave to the room. So that's what we're gonna do. It's a nice warm, cozy vibe with lots of lanterns, so. Okay. It's always an interesting, like different setup for me when I have to do a vertical drawing in this book because it's, I have to usually put my paints on top of the book and there's like no place to do that here. So I have to do a whole different setup. Changes my muscle memory. So here's the cool thing about this place is it has yellow walls and a brown ceiling and then like brown wood floors. So everything has this warm glow over it. So I'm just gonna start with a wash of yellow over everything. Yeah, eating around my artwork is um, a little brave. I uh, There's always a risk of something happening, but I tend to like hyper focus on my art and forget to like eat or drink so I always it's better to just have something nearby that I can immediately grab. So just things I've learned over the years about myself. larger. Hello other wonderful human. I remember I bought this as like a, I don't know, three quarter inch flat brush, size 16 it says, specifically for doing wide washes like this so I could stop using a tiny round brush when I'm filling in large areas. So... Look at me being smart sometimes. And I'm trying to avoid the people, because the people don't have quite the same warm cast on them. Except that woman is just so far back. And this table. This table is like lit by a window, so I'm going to let that be. And I tried to fix, I had like an ink splotch here, my pen sort of exploded. Um, I tried to sort of cover it up and we'll see how well that does. I, I did, um, oh. there goes the cat feeder. Asher is uninterested right now. I think he's upset because I took uh, laundry out of the dryer, but I have not put it away yet. And it's very, it's like fresh and warm, um, but it's still in the hamper. And I think he's upset he can't snuggle with it right now. Or me. He was screaming at me earlier, but 
he'll live. <laughs> um, what was this thing? Oh yeah, I, I did gouache over this first, and then I realized gouache is uh, water soluble, and as soon as I try to like put some watercolor over it, it'll just, you know, white paint will bleed into my uh, watercolor, and I didn't want that to happen, so I tried doing acrylic over top, which should sort of seal it. Um, but we'll see how that works. It's actually under here. Can be. Thank you for the likes. That does help. Okay. Almost there. my uh, I'm painting a wash song <laughs> okay there we go ah cute okay just rinse this out a little bit shape it, and then stick it back over there, because I'm not going to need it anymore. Uh, how long have I been using watercolor? That's a subjective question. Uh, I learned when I was very young, um, probably not with the greatest paints, um, and then I took a break for many, 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 many years, uh, and I've kind of recently come back to it. So depending on who you ask, uh, either 30 years or like four years. <laughs> so actively using them. Uh, yeah, like four years. Uh, would using that much water make paper crumbly? Um, not this paper. This is specific watercolor. It's a watercolor sketchbook. So it's thicker paper that is meant to hold that much water without buckling. It does curl a little bit. So, hold on, let me put my, my snack down. Um, if I hold up the edges of this, you can sort of see they're a little wobbly, um, but not too bad. And they, they'll, you know, they curve a little bit or have like a wiggle to them. But this is a 300 GSM watercolor sketchbook that is meant to withstand that. So, it is all right. And please draw along, Anne-Marie, you should. That would make me happy. First, you have to tell me what you're working on, though. Because I want to know. I want to visualize. Uh, okay, so... Mm, I want to lift up a little bit where these lanterns are. Make them a little lighter, a little brighter. Thank you. Um, you can see that one uh, in full posted on my Instagram. Um, I have not added it to the stories highlight where I've been posting all my sketchbook pages, but you can catch pretty much the rest of these pages uh, on uh, my Instagram stories highlight. So you can you can basically like flip through the whole sketchbook. Okay, I'm trying to lift this. And it's not really wanting to cooperate. I think that's about as good as that's gonna get. That's okay. Hi, Asher. Yeah. My cat's here. 
yeah, please draw along. Ooh, you're working on a lion, yay. Asher's a little lion, that's what he says. Even though I don't think he knows what that is, and I think he would probably um, turn into a little baby if he, if he encountered one. What? What can I do for you? You just want head pets? Okay. You want to sit down and hang out with me? Oh, he wants in my lap. Okay. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, he would, yeah, no, he would turn into more of a baby. Uh, what do you do about your outline? Um, I sketch it with pencil and then I use a zebra brush pen, uh, which is waterproof to ink everything. That way I can just paint on top of it and not worry about it bleeding into anything. And it's super fabulous. Okay. Uh, okay. I will just leave that up there so you can sort of see what, what that looks like. This is the fine point one. They also have a medium and a large, I don't know, medium and a thick. I forget what that's called, but broad, I guess. <laughs> then they should call it medium and thick. But I pretty much exclusively use the fine point. Actually, I can go over these because they're all like really dark, kind of like renaissance -y paintings. They're not, they're only going to get darker and they're not precious right now. Meow. Oh my gosh, kitty. I do not draw from imagination. This is from a photograph that I took. I am really only good at drawing from life, so I have to have a reference image. I'm amazed at people who can draw from their head, but that is not me. Yep, references are super important. Okay, that's getting there, and I'm just gonna drop in some pigment where it is a little darker to me. Because there's a little bit of like reflection from the from the lights and just shadows and things. And then this edge is darker because it's not being as lit from the windows underneath. Oh, 
Oh wow, we're already already at over a thousand likes. Thank you guys. Helps bring new friends in to hang out with us and paint or draw. And please join along if you are up to it. I love having art buddies. Oops. Oh, now he's climbing in the laundry basket. Okay. Asher. <laughs> he just, he knocked it over. Hang on. Asher. Hey. No. <laughs> Not right now. We'll get to that later. Him being a sassy bug. Oh no, and speaking of cat, hold on, I also, there's a cat here and here, but first I want to get this cleaned up, okay. And this is specifically why I bought tweezers <laughs> to get cat hairs out of my paintings. Oh, come on. Okay, maybe if I pick it up with a brush. Oh, I'm just moving it around. Ugh, okay, that might just have to live there for a little bit. We'll get it out of there. <laughs> Life with the cat. Okay. Um, floor. Gonna be similar tone. So I guess we'll just keep rocking with this raw umber. Um, it's also gonna get some of this burnt sienna, I think is what that is. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, cat hairs truly are part of the experience uh, in, in my art practice. They just kind of end up in everything. That's how you know it's authentic. Alright, here's where we're gonna go over this little repair spot. I think I basically just kind of have to drop pigment on there to kind of cover it up. Good thing it's gonna remain pretty dark, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Okay. Onwards. This area is pretty light. All right, here's where I'm gonna start getting some of this sienna to drop in. Give it that reddish tone. And we can get under here. This is why I like round brushes. And if you keep, and these, these brushes are really nice because they keep their tip really nicely. Yeah, I know, buddy. Alright. <laughs> Just making his protest known. Um, you can, as long as you're delicate, you can get into these really fine areas without having to switch your brush out. I'm about to have to refill that pan. It's getting dangerously low. Yeah, 
I was like, I was being all precious around this, but like some of these bits are kind of the same colored wood. So, I'm getting that. Thank you, Jessica. Years and years <clears throat> and years of practice. Less, less talent, more practice. I think I finally found uh, this streaming Christmas ja Christmas jazz channel that isn't blasting me with ads every five minutes. Uh, so I appreciate that. This one has firecracker crackle sound effects in the background. I don't know if that's being picked up, but it's soothing. Hi Nixia, I see you liking, liking things over there, hitting that heart button, appreciate it. This is a watercolor sketchbook, it is a, let me get the brand, it's on this back page here somewhere reflections but like with an x and an accent i think it's french i don't know you tell me Emery. um <laughs> uh, it's lovely it's it's got these bright blue covers if you can see that there um i really like it i had never heard of the brand before um but i loved this book enough and the paper quality is really great that i went and bought a second one so as soon as this one's done i'll start over again in a new one just like it Uh, it is cold press actually, um, and it's only length, but honestly, I have these foam blocks that came in something I had that I'm using to prop up the back page. In the middle it lays uh, nicer, but on the ends I, I do like to prop it up just so it's not breaking the binding so much, um, but that's my personal preference. Otherwise it does, yeah, it operates, it operates well. Back to some of the sienna. There's a, like a lot of shadowiness under here. Including being cast by that leg. Yeah, I, a high quality watercolor paper holds color great. Like I've had these paints for years and used them on all sorts of paper and it wasn't until I upgraded my paper that their vibrancy really came out and I cannot go back. So that is my advice for uh, newer watercolor artists is um, spend more, you know, go for a more budget student level paint set um, and spend more on your paper than you were originally going to do because the paper really matters. You don't have to go so high as like arches level watercolor paper. I, I don't even buy arches because it's just so ridiculously expensive for my purposes, but go for like a very a specific watercolor paper. Like a nice thing. Okay, this is not a cat hair. This is just straight up my hair that fell in here. So, I'm gonna get that out of there. <laughs> oh, what is my life? I need more coffee.
Oh boy. Next, oh, I got my, yeah, my brush is all out right here. <laughs> that cracks me up. All right, I want to do these lanterns because they're so precious and they're so yellow and just ugh. The vibes are immaculate, as they say. Uh, trying to find books that are affordable and still good quality. If you're um, just looking for like a practice uh, sketchbook, there's uh, the Canson, Canson XL makes a watercolor sketchbook. Um, that was a very loud car. Um, it is five to ten bucks depending on where you're at, if there's a coupon or not. Um, and it's, it is uh, like a ring bound, which is not my favorite, but if you don't mind that. Um, it is decent quality for just practicing and getting started. And it's and they, they make them large too. It's like an eight half by 11. The mixed media Canson note is nice. Um, I just I have um, have a really large one uh, that I use for like sketching and stuff, but it does not hold water very well. So if you're doing heavy watercolors, it does buckle pretty badly. Um, so if you're looking specifically to get into watercolors, I recommend going specifically for the watercolor paper. But otherwise, yeah, the mixed media is great if you're just tinkering around. In fact, I might have to bust that out to play with my markers some more. Um, I have some alcohol ink markers that I want to practice with some more. I just haven't gotten much experience with them. And I don't know, like I know they, they do, there's like specific marker paper, but like I just don't want to go out and buy another sketch pad. <laughs> But yeah, maybe that mixed media will work for my markers. Okay, these two are weird because they're like a dark cloth lantern. And I'm trying to figure out like what color they are. I guess they're kind of brown. It's gonna be the same color as the ceiling though. Yeah, that price per sheet. Like, that's why I don't want to go get, like, necessarily have to go get another, like, marker-specific pad of paper, because I don't know how much of it I'm going to end up using, and it just feels like a, you know, money sink that I don't necessarily need yet, unless I'm going to really get into marker. Somehow I doubt it. Distracted, and I think this needs a lot more shadow, which is going to be in the form of this brown. Because this area is not only underneath the table, but shadowed from that window above.
And same with under this couch back here. That's good to know, Anne-Marie. Mixed media struggles if you're layering tons of marker. I, yeah, would not have considered that until it was probably too late. But that does make sense. I mean, it's kind of like if you load it up with too much watercolor, it's gonna start to buckle. Okay. We're just tossing in more shadows and dark areas where it belongs. Can't wait to do these people. It's gonna be so cute. Those little, their little pops of color. I should not have done this already because the table is a lighter color and you should do your lighter colors first. Oh well. <laughs> Whoops. But since we're here, see this whole table edge is brown. I just like to make my own life harder. It's fine. Sometimes I just, just get drawn into the parts that interest me and I sort of forget the important basics, but we compensate. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You live, you learn. And you make the same mistakes again. It's okay. Alright, a little coffee break again. Here's the other important thing I'm missing. These walls need to be much more yellow. So I'm gonna do that next, because it's a large area. Pretty light color. Ah, uh, just where to start. Okay. Do. Yeah, make the same mistake several times just to be sure. Yeah, yeah, I get that. You know, so it just takes a, some repetition to fully sink in that that is a bad idea, but. Sometimes you learn more effective ways around it that way. Started on the right side and smudged it. Oh no, yeah. That's what us righties have to remember, like, you gotta start from the top left and sort of work your way down and across. 
I, I am better about remembering that because I've stuck my hand in wet paint and just smudged it so many times that I, I do keep that in mind a little better now. Like you notice, I like I started with the ceiling first and then sort of worked down and now I'm going back up into where I know I can reach without smacking my hand on the floor here. I forgot to do that lantern. Oh well. Okay. Wait, water soluble graphite? What is that? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Interesting. I will have to look at that. I've used graphite powder. We know how that operates. And we know how to clean it up. Don't we, Emery? <laughs> yeah, never heard of water soluble graphite, but that sounds cool. Way too much yellow just now. Okay, there we go. Hey, you're not the only one who's spilled graphite powder all over um, themselves. So, you're not alone. <laughs>
I think I actually still have a little jar of that stuff somewhere. Like that, that original, that same jar that I spilled on myself. I like managed to scoop enough of it back up to be like, oh, this is worth keeping. <laughs> but I don't think I've used it since, so don't know what that says. Saying what I need to do next. Uh, tint this table since it's bugging me. It needs to kind of go next. Uh, and it's very pale. It's mostly got like, I don't know, reflections of light on it. So some shadowy blue, some yellow, uh, gray, grayish blue. Let's see, let's use blue and then just dab it on top of this already shadowy color I have, but then just pick up a little bit of it with some water. Let's see what that does. That'll do, that is what I wanted. Ha ha. Same across here, but like even paler, if I can manage that. There we go. Okay. Hope he smokes. When did we get to 8,000 likes? You guys are awesome. Uh, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out and t hitting that tappy, hearty, likey thing. That helps out. But yeah, I'm getting through like the really big big areas first um, and then we're gonna get all nitpicky with like these people and that's gonna be pow, I'm like it's gonna be awesome <laughs> so yeah we're moving down brush sizes progressively as we go I'm gonna get this very pale yellow hopefully just dancing through here Lanterns. A little bit right there. Cool. Um, real quick, just gonna fill this little couch in. Uh, how long have I been painting using watercolor? Um, okay. Again, I, I think I answered this earlier, but it was like, it's debatable because uh, I started when I was very, very young um, and then stopped for many, 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 many years. Uh, so I think we settled on like actively painting with watercolor for about four years, something like that. 
but only like really, really pursuing it this last year or so where I'm, um, this is actually like the first sketchbook that I will complete in two more pages. Um, and I can already see a massive improvement from like the very front few pages to, to now. So you can see that uh, on my uh, Instagram. So you can actually, there's a saved highlights where you can flip through almost this whole book so far and see, see what's going on. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased. Still learning lots though, um, but I did buy my second sketchbook. So we're gonna continue on in 2023. Less talent, more lots of practice. <laughs> oh, this towel is uh, like a crappy scrap of cotton that I tested my sewing machine stitches on. So that's why there's like this really ugly satin stitch attempt right there. Um, it's basically just a rag, just a cotton rag. Cause I don't, yeah, these are not really good for much else. So I've got a, three of these, I think that I just rotate through and launder. Yes, practice, you will get there. Practice makes progress. Because uh, I don't think as artists we will ever feel we have achieved perfection, so the only thing you can do is continue to improve. And that is a noble path. Yeah, what have you, uh, what have you been painting? I have been painting, this is like my travel journal, um, which is, you know, these days less travel, more like, yay, I left the house and went to a coffee shop I like, <laughs> but it's still, still fun. Um, what setup do I use to film? I have a it's like a microphone arm, one of those like scissor arm thingies that's just clipped to the edge of my table. So it might be a slight bit wobbly, but I try to mitigate that. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh heck yeah, Blix Black Friday sale. I uh, I got caught by some sale they were having earlier in the quarter. Um, probably good I avoided their Black Friday sale because I have enough art supplies as it is. I did get caught by a few others though, but it was already things I was intending on buying. So it was just like happy coincidence that things were discounted. I, I otherwise try not to go crazy on Black Friday. Sort of... I don't know. I'm very sick of capitalism, so... <laughs> Only so much I can do about that. All right, this gentleman is basically wearing all gray, which is 
thrilling, but he's also just way in the background here, so I don't really care. Makes it easy. That's good. Yeah, I. I'm yeah. Maybe yeah. And then like there's Cyber Monday and I don't know. I'm trying to like disconnect a little more this year because. Uh, yeah, just I'm just done with the like sales and couponing rat race and stuff. It's bizarre. And so not important in the scheme of things. Like I don't know. I'd much rather have the, the memories of the time I've spent with the people around me than stuff on sale, you know? Is that me? Am I getting old? Is that me? Am I old? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Amory. <laughs> yeah, why not always have the low prices if that's if they can afford to do that? Like, it's a lot of it is just so much lies. Like, uh, I was thinking how uh, there's usually like Black Friday editions. So talking about so you know, there's like a lot of people get a new TV on Black Friday. Um, manufacturers have figured that out and manu and make special Black Friday editions of TVs with fewer features than the normal TVs just to make up that cost. Like, I, I just, that blew my mind when I learned that. Um, and I was like, oh, of course, they're not going to have the same quality. Like, they'll just use cheaper materials and less features and less security and just all of that just to sell a cheaper TV and make it look like it's a deal. But they'll price, you know, give it a normal price as the full feature TV and then discount it for Black Friday. It's just, it's a full lie. So I was like, yeah, what? Mm, I'm done. I'm over this. I don't, I don't, I refuse to participate. <laughs> so I'm still rocking a TV. Um, I got for free off of a friend who upgraded theirs. Um, and it is a dumb TV. And, uh, yeah, doesn't want to connect to the internet and feed me more ads, so, or steal my data. And I'm a fan of that. Yeah, gift certificates for experiences is great. Um, I am leaning more that way. Like, as a kid, I was like, oh, like... I, I did not appreciate it as much as I did, as I, as I do now, uh, but now I get it. Um, I wish my parents had sort of like explained more why they were doing that. Um, so I don't know, give, give your kids a lesson in anti-capitalism with the gift certificate, but <laughs> um, yeah, that is, that is smart. Oh yeah, the, the, like TV with the VHS included. Uh, we were not that fancy, so good for you. Um, I hope you like recycled it or pawned it or something because some people will still pick those up. I have a friend who has a huge uh, VHS collection because she is a movie aficionado and would probably love something like that. Okay, I'm doing a quick stretch because I have been hunched over for a while now, and if you have also been hunched over, you should uh, unshrimp, as we call it. So, do some twists. Mm -hmm. 
and stretch up. Ooh. And decompress your spine. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Ooh, that's better. Back to it. Uh, I think it's tiny brush time. I think I'm getting down to the kind of the nitty gritty. Ooh, nice. A shop specifically designed for old electronics you don't use anymore. That's great. Yeah, I mean, our pawn shops kind of work like that for us, or I suppose, like, um, Goodwill and other sort of thrift shops cover that purpose. Um, there's another hair on here. Let's see. Is this other one gonna let me pull it out now? Maybe. Ha <laughs> ha I got it! Goodbye, cat hairs. Okay, and my coffee's gone, but I can show you my cool art mug now. This is my art history mug. I guess it starts over here with uh, prehistoric art history, and we just will cycle around to all the historical arts. Well, not all, clearly not all, but as much as can fit on a mug and be uh, representative. That's pretty fun. I enjoy this one. I like it because it's so big. do a series on how to unshrimp. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, I probably could do that because uh, I've been doing that a lot. Um, along with like a little uh, meditation practice during my work day, because same thing, hunched over a computer, tippy typing away, uh, you start to hunch up a little, a little more than you should. Okay, I forgot to do this. Back haul is also yellow. Maybe not that yellow. What palette am I using? I am uh, using, these are Windsor Newton Professional Series watercolors for the most part. Um, they are the tube paints and I fill my own quarter pans. Um, oops, I almost dipped into the non-existent coffee mug. Okay. Um, yeah, I fill my own quarter pans. Let me move this little eraser guy. And then click them in with a magnet, like this one here. This is an empty one. Uh, and then it clips into a any tin, really. This is a vintage tin I picked up at an antique shop years and years and years ago. Um, that I only recently started using as uh, my paint tray, which is its original purpose. So I'm very happy to finally get it back to that. And now I'm gonna pick all these cat hairs out of my palette. Because there's a few. Goodness. I mean, it makes sense. You get a, like a sticky, slightly sticky environment in here. And of course it's gonna like magnetize all the cat hairs that are into it. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I love um, being able to customize a tray like this because then I can pick my own color palette and swap out things I don't need. Like these are two colors I need to swap out that I don't use. One's a duplicate and one's just black, which I just never use. So, okay, what are we doing? I want to do this cute little window back here because you can just just barely see a little bit of nature outside. And I didn't quite give it the door frame it needs, so I'm just gonna paint that in. Like that. There we go. And kind of same here, this is a little window frame. Oh yeah, with a half husky, I'm sure. Yeah, they produce a lot of fur. I had a friend with a husky and uh, he was sweeping daily. That thing was just a, a, a fur factory. It was insane. Uh, 
Okay, and this door frame, which is bluey silver. And this is just some random art on the wall, so. And there's like reddish pink down here. There a little bit. Hello again, welcome back. We're working on the interior of the coffee house I painted yesterday, so you get to see the full full process. I've been I've been on a roll. I've got like I said, like two, yeah, two spread, two pages left on the sketchbook for it to be done. So I'm really motivated to actually just complete it. Okay, that blue is not turning out bluey enough, so. where I start to get nervous too because sometimes filling in these details can like it feels like it makes or breaks it and I'm I'm anxious so uh, what do I want to do next okay we're gonna do some of the very background people it's a little less intimidating which means I can actually zoom in on my photo here Hit 9,000 likes. Thanks, y'all. This is where you start to lose me a little bit because I get I have to get like so focused on some of these details that I'm a little less able to chit chat. But appreciate y'all hanging in there. Oh yeah, I forgot her chair. And I think his needs to be darker for sure. Get another layer. Alright, he is also wearing a black shirt, which is not exciting when he's sitting in a black chair, so I don't know. Maybe I'll give him a gray shirt instead. Or a purpley gray shirt, as a thought. Hmm. Just 
just to give it a slightly different tone. Yeah, I like that. flat color but we'll come back and give it some shape um, he is wearing little tennis shoes white socks and khakis the thrill of khakis Yes, my space heater just kicked in. Oh, that feels nice. I have it pointed straight at me in this corner because these windows I'm near are very cold in the winter. And there's not a whole lot I can do about it because I rent. see that too. Oops, that is very Oompa Loompa for this gentleman here. Sorry, bro. Didn't mean to orange you that bad. Um, and he is wearing gray, but since I put him in gray, I might put him in blue. Haha, -ha, artistic license. You you do not get to choose your own wardrobe when I'm when I'm in charge. Also, that works really well because it pops against that yellow wall. Ha ha. -ha. <laughs> you have no choices. All right, and I think I should color in her laptop. So this is the fun thing about um, using these ink ink pens beforehand is you just you have made your own coloring page and then you just get to color it in <laughs> and i love that so Oh, 
her legs. There we go. Okay. Guess what color this man is wearing? Also gray. Goodness. Which is, I don't know, fine in this case because he's so far in the background. I don't want to draw a ton of attention to him, so we'll just we'll stick with that one. It is a light gray though, so. Ta -da! It's like why don't why don't men wear more color? I don't get that. It's it's so fun. And then we'll do all these chrome leggies. All these chair leggies need a little bit of dimension and then we'll do we'll highlight them with a white uh, gel pen essentially. Chrome. Why do I feel the need to yell witness me? wild because I'm bouncing back and forth between several colors. I need to be careful things don't get super muddy. I need to do that lantern I forgot. One little swoop. that. And then I think this ceiling is going to need another layer. I can already tell. It's too light. But it's coming along. We're getting there. Um, he's also wearing a boring black baseball cap, so we're not going to do that. Um, I will shade his shorts, though. Dum -dum -dum -dum. That artwork. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, we're gonna do green thing. I think this is also kind of a green thing into kind of a blue thing. Oh, that's not gonna cooperate. There, that's a better blue thing. And a purple thing. Ooh, let's see if we can use up some of this. And 
into a orangey red theme. You know, um, I also forgot, let's see if I can add this in on the fly. It's like one of those floor lamps back here. I don't think it's too late, so we're gonna throw that on there. And there's also some art on this wall over here. Woohoo! Okay. That does need like a minute to dry just to be really sure because I have smudged that ink before and it is um, heartbreaking. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. I am going to fill in a little bit of that. Oh, I can do this fun water bottle, which is like a really bright minty teal color. See if I can achieve that over here with that and then some yellow. I don't know what that's gonna do. We're gonna try it. Ooh, okay, that got really green, not necessarily mint color. Um cerulean. Well, this is not cerulean, you know what I mean? That uh, light blue. Back to a little bit of this. Oh, too dark. Dang it. Well, I might not be able to get that. Uh, so we're gonna make do. They worked out pretty decently. And this coffee cup, which has like a little delicate pink floral pattern on it. I'm just gonna Oh, that is dry. Hang on. Let that work up a little bit. And then the beverage, which is foamy. So just a little bit of that there. And then we'll let that dry and we'll add some shadows. There we go. Oh, also this like weird bar on here. Uh, it's just a metal bar. Okay. Um, gonna touch up some of these chrome details. Ooh, we got to 10,000 likes. Thanks, y'all. Okay, table legs, chair legs. Doo, 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 doo. Cool, and you can't even tell that I smudged ink on that. Well, I didn't smudge ink, ink exploded. 
but I fixed it. So that's exciting. All right, I'm gonna have to do a spacewalk cap. Let's do like navy, which is gonna be this dark blue. Well, darker blue, come on. Get a little more pigment there. There we go. Yeah. That'll do, that's more exciting. Yeah, everyone, welcome to my world where the walls are yellow and everyone has to wear blue because it contrasts well. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna do another after this. I'm gonna have to take a break and stretch my legs because I've been sitting for a while now. Um, but yeah, this one's gonna take, this one is taking me a little while longer because of how much detail there is, which I like. It's a, it's, it's a lot to chew on, but it's fun. edge of this table. Yes, color improv. Yeah, I like that. This guy's little, little green cap. Maybe not that green. Let's get him. Little tan. There we go. Whatever. And just so this isn't paper white, I'm just gonna get this a little shady shadow there. Alrighty, we're almost, we're closing in closer to the end, I think. At least I want that to be the case. You fell out? What did you fall out of? I'm... <laughs> what does that mean, Anne-Marie? Right. Like I said, I am going to have to do the ceiling darker, and I sort of knew that was coming. So let's get this brown ready. Oh, you fell out of the life, I understand. Okay. Well, welcome back. <laughs> I was concerned for you. I was like, are you okay? Do you need uh, physical assistance? Because I can't, can't do that. Okay, this is the tricky thing with adding on a layer to a large area after it's already dry, is trying to avoid the hard edges. Like, there's gonna be some, but do the best I can. So has anyone else done their Christmas decorating or holiday decorating? So has anyone else done their Christmas decorating or holiday decorating? So has anyone else done their Christmas decorating or holiday decorating? So 
me that gets everything around me messy when I work on big pieces. Um, no, I think that's that's kind of the nature of large pieces in art. I think my internet might have hiccuped there. I don't know what's going on. Let me know if you can still hear me, because that was weird. Oop, yeah, we're getting curly here. So this will balance out when I do the other side of this page. That's what happens with these, is they'll curl one way when you work on them, and then you paint the other side, and it sort of wants to curl the other way, but it sort of counterbalances. But I will just clip this down here in the meantime so it's not in my way. Okay, I'm back, that's good. Yeah, I think my, uh, my Christmas music stopped. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. Yes, this is the inside of the coffee coffee shop I painted up here. So, yes. Okay. Music is back for my own sanity. Okay, this guy needs a little shadow what color yes just a little paint gray I guess Oh yeah, I gotta do this part, which is a little narrower, so let's use a smaller brush. So it's still sealing over here. Actually rather dark because it's behind this support beam. Oh, okay. Sorry. I've got to like stare at this for a second to see what I'm missing. I feel like something's off and I'm just not quite zoned in on what it is yet. I know this like back, the whole back area, like there's stuff back here I just could not fit in here. Um, like 
there's like a whole wall of like bulletins and stuff and that was just gonna get too visually messy but maybe I don't know maybe I can sort of indicate that somehow in the meantime we're gonna fill in these little paintings literally all that was in that one. Uh, this hallway can get darkened. It is actually kind of gray back there. How often do I paint? I paint um, these days once or twice a week at least, sometimes more, sometimes less depending on how busy uh, the rest of my work life schedule is because I work full time in a very not art field so uh, that sometimes takes up my brain space. Uh, but yeah, I try to sit down here at least once a week. Just to, just to stay sane, because I enjoy this. It's very relaxing. Alright. I need... I, oh, I can shadow this a little bit. Okay, back to the teeny tiny brush. And we're going to use... Back to this burnt umber color for the wall shadows, because it's very warm. I want to give it that feeling of warmth. I see you all hitting that like button still. Thank you so much. It is not expected, but it is uh, welcome and appreciated. I'm just sitting here hanging out painting. I'm glad you all are with me. I think I know what I want to do with these lamps. Get them a little darker. Mm -hmm. 
make them stand out a little more. Sort of that weird gray brown fabric color. There we go. But then they still have that little orange glow on the inside. Another sit back and look. Uh, I, I know I need to do these paintings on the ceiling. I'm kind of saving those for last because they're pretty dark. Um, I think her head needs a little bit more dimension. Let's see if I can give her a little bit of little shadow. And kind of same with this woman. Coat. Uh, let's see if I can get the right color for her coat. Oh, this one has ads. Dang it. Do my best to turn them off and skip them as fast as possible. There we go. Okay. And zoomed out too far. Or zoomed in too far. There we go. Uh, I need to give him some shadowing too, don't I? Do, 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 do. Oh, and him, yeah. Oh, yeah. As I remember everybody, like, oh, yeah, everyone needs some shadow and dimension. I love how excited I get, too. Like, ooh, yay, <laughs> dimension. It's fun, though. It's just, like, they just, like, pop, you know? They just suddenly become 3D, and you're like, ooh, that looks so much better. These hairs came loose, so we're just gonna gently pick that out of there. It happens over time with brushes and use. But now I think the tip looks marvelously better, which is great. Okay, another sit and scan of what am I missing? Oh! I don't know if this is even gonna like come across. But there was a little bit of reflection of this lamp in the floor that I don't think I did. I 
know, I'll feel better having attempted to, even if I put it in too late and it doesn't work. In fact, I'm going to brighten this a little more because it's doing the same thing. It just helps tie things in, you know, the light's reflecting in there, that's how, how it works. Okay. Time for these. Ooh! This is, um, a little scary, because I don't, I don't know what's going on with these. They're just, we just sort of made them up. In fact, this first one I'm doing is fake, because there's a ceiling fan there. And I was like, I don't want to paint a ceiling fan. That's, that's not attractive or fun. Uh, so I just put another fake painting in there that doesn't actually exist. They frames for the most part. And I guess these are all like mostly very black, kind of like Renaissance-y spotlit black background paintings. So we're just gonna like take some wild reds and oranges for the subjects and just sort of splotch them in here. Not really sure what's actually going on, and I don't, oops, really care. I just closed my reference image and I don't know where there it is. Finally starting my Christmas. Um, I still haven't ordered mine. Like I, um, so yeah, they're they're probably gonna be like New Year's or yeah, New Year's cards. So you know, no judging. Uh, I cannot. I cannot talk. I am a hypocrite. Oops, I just smeared a bunch of yellow in my, uh, blue. Oops. Let's see if I can pull that out of there. Just be like, no, thank you. And then we're gonna do just so much, so much really dark Payne's Gray to fill these in. Cause that's what they're actually doing.
then after this, I gotta go stretch my legs because they're falling asleep. Also have to do another layer on the ceiling just to help balance out the contrast on these paintings but other than that we are pretty close to done once these are finished globbed like way too much on here there we go These are getting more and more difficult the further we go back and the smaller they get. I don't think I have any smaller brushes. Uh, that'll make this any easier. Just have to be careful with this. I think this is a size, what size is this? Two? And it's just tricky, it's so little. Hello again, welcome back. You get to see the finish of the inside of the coffee shop I painted yesterday. Wants to basically just get squiggles in them. Okie dokie, I think. Well, that's that for the paintings themselves. The ceiling needs some work. It's kind of just a ugly wash of brown that is not accurate. So let me see if I can work work on that before we finish up. Because um, a lot of it has this like yellow halo of those lanterns again. So I want to add that a little bit. Okay, I can add that by probably lifting that up. morning. Well, good afternoon for me now. And I'm going to add a little orange to 
to let that light reflect around. Uh, well, I said a little orange. <laughs> Oops. But hey, maybe that'll help pull the ceiling away a little. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I do tend to um, work pretty dry with my watercolor, um, I've noticed, compared to a lot of other artists, but that's just, just what works for me, so. So here's the other thing about the ceiling is these pictures up here are hung on like a white wire grid that's you know suspended somehow um and it's kind of ugly <laughs> i didn't want to include that but it does give this shadowed depth to these paintings because they're not hung flat on a hard surface you know they're sort of a couple inches away from the actual ceiling so i'm trying to sort of give that dropped effect. And it's a little difficult because I think the pigment of this brown wants to sort of separate and not play nice. And it's wooed. Okay, I don't know if that's quite achieving what I need, but I'm also getting kind of tired of doing the ceiling, so uh, maybe, maybe about it. I think that did help though. Oh yeah, that helped. And just to smooth out some of those hard edges. You just tickle them with the paintbrush. Just a little, just a little tickle. There we go. 
Where are we? This is a coffee shop in uh, Austin, Texas called Flight Path Coffee. You can see the exterior of it here. And this is the interior that I'm just finishing up. So I think, let me zoom back out on my reference. I think, give me another moment to sort of scan, make sure there aren't any other little details I wanna wrap up. Like a couple of these little chromy bits. Okay, I think that's got to be about it. I'm going to try to lift this because there's a highlight that I did not leave room for. call this done for now and like you know let it rest I might come back and add a little more later but I think this is about as good as I'm gonna be able to do for now because I've been staring at this for a while um I need to take a break uh, I as I notice one more thing that I need to just do right now That's a little better. Okay. I'm noodling. Noodle, noodle, noodle. But I think that is everything I can do for today. Thank you all for joining me again. Uh, I, uh, again, I have two pages left in this. I don't know when I'm going to get to them. If that's going to be this weekend, during the week, or next weekend. Um, but I'm excited to be wrapping this up. Um, and yeah, you'll, you can see everything finished. Um, I'll be posting them over on my Instagram when they're very done. And other than that, don't forget to follow if you've enjoyed hanging out with And I hope to see you all an another time. Have a good weekend.